Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Master the NEC, where we talk about the National Electrical Code and all things electrically related. My name is Paul Abernathy, your host, and today we're going to do a quick little lesson. I get a lot of questions from people that say, Paul, how do I do adjustment and corrections? And there's a long video that I have out there called Derating Demystified that goes all over all the concepts of adjustment and corrections and things like that. However, we wanted to do something quicker, uh, shorter, that actually helps get people to the understanding of what adjustment and corrections are all about. And there's other ways to do this, whether we're starting at the overcurrent device and, and going backwards or, or starting at a lower value and going forward, but we're going to use multiplication. And multiplication means that we're starting at the higher value and we're trying to find a lesser value. Whereas if I had a lower value, then I could use division and find a higher value. Now, I might go into that, but let's just kind of stick with the topic. So let's look at the question. The question says, we have an EMT raceway with eight current carrying conductors. They're 12 gauge copper, THHN, THWN-2. That's important because if it's a dry location, we don't say it here, but since it's got a dash two, it doesn't matter whether it's wet or dry, I get to pull my starting opacity from the highest valued rated temperature of that insulation, which is 90 degrees C. So that's gonna help us in a second. Now it says I have THHN, THWN-2 conductors being installed in an ambient temperature uh, location of 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, what is the conductor's opacity after adjustment and corrections are applied? Very simple question that comes on exams. So let's try to solve it. So there's a couple things we have to look for. Very the first thing we know answering this question. Number one is find the opacity of the conductor based on its insulation rating. The next thing that we got to do is find the adjustment factor for those eight current carrying conductors. Okay. And then the next thing, because it says they're current carrying right here. Next, it says find the correction factor for the ambient temperature. So it's other than what's given to us in the ampacity tables. So we have to do, and then we get to step four, we've got to do some math. Let's kind of work through this. So the first thing we're going to do is find the ampacity for this insulated rating in there, THHN, THWN-2. So let's go to the code. And as you can see here, I'm going to go down to the ampacity table right here. Now you see that THHN is listed here as well as THWN-2 is listed right here, okay? So they're all right here. In fact, we'll do that. We'll highlight them just so everybody knows that they're there. There you go. And we'll do it right here as well. Okay, so we're looking for 12 gauge. So we come down here in the 12 gauge column. We've got that right there. And we come over here and it is 30 amperes. So that's what we got to work with. So let's go back to our presentation. There we go. Now, so that's 30 amperes. That was step one. Now step two, we have to find the adjustment factor for those eight conductors. Now why do we have to do that? Well, if you look right here, it says that to use the ampacity that's in this table, it's got to be not more than three current air conductors in a raceway. And we've got eight. Okay, so that's an important thing to understand. Also, remember it says that this table is based on 30 degrees C right here and we aren't dealing with 30 degrees C the equivalent to that is 86 degree Fahrenheit ours was 104 degrees Fahrenheit so the ampacities here are helpful but we realize that we're gonna to have to do some kind of adjustment and some kind of correction to this ampacity value right here okay so that takes us back here so we're looking for the adjustment factor for these eight current current conductors so where do we go well we go back in the code, and we're going to go to 31015B3A. Here is our adjustment factors. And since we've got a 4 to 6, 7 to 9, 10 to 20, 21 to 30, but of course, we know we're dealing with 8. So we're going to be right here in the 7 to 8, and we're going to be over here, and we're going to use the 70%. Now remember, we're going to convert this to a decimal. Okay, so you move it two places to the left, so it's 0.70, and that's what we're going to use in our calculation. All right, let's go back here. So we write that down. I've got 70%, but we know we're going to convert it just like we're going to do the next one. We're going to convert this to 0 0.70. Now, the next thing is correction factor for the ambient temperature. Well, now remember, in a perfect world, let's go back to the impacity table here. In a perfect world right here, we could simply pull these impacities from here. Now, remember, we do have terminal limitations, okay? 75 degree terminals are typically what you're going to get, but we can use the 90 for adjustment and corrections. We know this. So that's what we're doing. We're taking advantage of this adjustment and correction. We also want to make sure that the ultimately at the end of the day, we don't exceed the value under the 75 degree C column. But let's kind of work out because the question simply wanted to know what is the conductor's opacity after the adjustment and correction is applied. 
So now we have to say, well, where do we get the information for a correction factor due to this 104 degrees Fahrenheit? Because it's not 86 degrees Fahrenheit. What do we do? So that means we're going to go back here and we're going to go to table 31015B2A. And there you see that's the correction table right there. That's why we call this a correction and we call the other one right here an adjustment. Okay, you see how it's written in there? All right, so we knew that it was 104 degrees Fahrenheit. And so we know that here it's 100% taken at full value at 86. That's what the table 31015B16 is based on right there. Well, we know it's 104. Now, how do you use this column? If we're using the 90 degree for this a correction, then that means we want to use the 90 degree column because that's what the insulation is rated for. Now, if the insulation had been rated for 75, then we would do it from these values. So you find the 90 degree, whatever the insulation is you're using for your calculation, simply come down and then find the temperature value that's in your equation. In our case, it was a 104. So we'll highlight that. That takes me to a 0.91. I'm having trouble making sure I highlight only the one I want. <laughs> right there. So 0.91. So let's go back to our equation. So that's the 0.91. And again, we're, it was equals to 91%. But we converted that because that table actually gave us the decimal value. I kind of wish this table would do that instead of giving us percentages, but you know how to figure it out. Now, a couple key notes. Here are your code references for your ampacities 31015B16 in the set 2017 code. In the 2020 code, it goes to 31016. Uh, in order to get our adjustment factors, and that was the number of current carrying conductors in excess of three, we went to 31015B3A in the 2017 code. Now in the 2020 code, that's totally changing. It's going to table 310.15C1. And then the last one we did here was correction factor for the ambient temperature. And that was at 31015B2A in the 2017 code. But in the 2020 code, it's going to go to table 31015B2. Okay, so it's simply a logical flow between B to C and, and how you flow through the process. Now, let's do the math. That was step four. So I have 30 amperes. We saw that because we went to 31015B16. We got the 30 amps under the 90, and we can use that value to apply adjustment and corrections. So you're, if you start at the very top, means we start at 30 amps, then we use multiplication to come down to find out what our conductor's ampacity is after you apply adjustment and corrections. So 30 amperes multiplied by 0 0.70 times 0.91 equals 19.11 amperes. Okay, so basically I have a conductor that's good enough for 19.11 amps. Now you and me know that there's this thing called small conductor rules in 240.4D that says this 12 gauge has to be protected by a 20 amp overcurrent protection device. So there's 19 amps on this conductor. It doesn't correspond. So yes, I could protect it still with a 20 amp overcurrent device, but my actual load cannot exceed 19.11 amps because that's our new ampacity of this conductor. Okay, so that's where your small conductor rules come into in 240.4D. But all we wanted to do in this lesson, and it's very typical of what you're going to see on an exam, is what is the ampacity of this conductor after their adjustment and corrections? What is it good for? And that's what it's good for right there. Hopefully you got something out of this lesson. Uh, be sure to visit our website at masterthenec.com or electricalcodeacademy.com. If you got questions or you'd like to see other videos or podcasts on certain different code questions or lessons, feel free to email us at info, that's I-N-F-O, at masterthenec.com or info at electricalcodeacademy.com. We'd be more than happy to put some training together for you. Thanks again. God bless.